When a family hears the words, would you like us to call hospice? It can be a time of great sadness and overwhelming confusion. As soon as you hear the word hospice, it kind of sets you off. I mean, I knew a little bit about what hospice was at the time. So that kind of, you know, it was upsetting to hear that because you kind of know. And my only question to the doctors was, well, how long? When we first sit down and talk to somebody who has an incurable illness, as a patient and as a family member, we understand that it takes time for them to get their arms around that diagnosis. Many look to the hospice community to provide them with options for care and support. Well, hospice care is very comprehensive. I mean, I'm the nurse part. We have social workers, medical director. We have home health aides, volunteers, chaplains that, that work to um, make sure that we're fulfilling the needs that a person requires. We have a saying in hospice that even when curing isn't possible, healing is always, always possible. And so really I feel like my role is to come in and, and, and find out where, is the, the, where are the places of healing. Um, because that's always, there's always hope. There's always hope for healing. Right now, patient options for hospice care on the South Shore are limited to being in their own home, or they can be transferred to either a hospital or nursing home that provides hospice care or reside in a hospice home that is not conveniently located to family and friends. One of the difficulties of home hospice, particularly in the New England region, is that the, the burden of care falls on the family in terms of taking care of somebody. Even in the most loving families, there will be circumstances that prevent a patient from remaining in the home when receiving hospice care. At some point, the active treatments don't work anymore. And at that point, the discussion turns to how do we maximize the level of supportive care that we have? And we usually try and do that within the home with something called home hospice. If we're not able to keep people comfortable at home, we then transition them into an inpatient setting. And, and hopefully, in your area, you have a hospice house that you can go to. But there are no hospice homes on the South Shore. My name is Kathy King Tedeschi, and um, I'm with the Campus of Caring, and we are trying to build a nonprofit hospice home on the South Shore. We spent a long time educating ourselves as first of all what hospice is all about, and second of all about hospice homes. And we were kind of shocked to find out that a, a uh, a well-educated state of Massachusetts, the area we're in, didn't have any type of hospice facility, non-profit hospice facility, anywhere on the South Shore. Campus of Caring was founded in 2005 by Kathy King Tedeschi, Ralph E. Tedeschi, and Chris Hall. We want to make education a component of the work we were doing, and that's where the name Campus and Campus of Caring came from. Since then, Campus of Caring has been incorporated as a charitable, nonprofit entity with a 19-member board of directors and many active volunteers. Work is currently underway to design our 10-bed facility in Norwell that will serve the South Shore community. It, it's going to happen. We've, we've, we've joined on with the, the you know, VNA, which is going to be the hospice provider. And you know, they're a bunch of phenomenal people that have a, the reputation that, that is exactly what we need. Campus of Caring chose Norwell V&A and Hospice to be our partner and eventual operator of this facility based on their recognized commitment to providing outstanding nursing and hospice care. You know, we talk about the idea of a hospice house. Um, the word hospice, of course, comes from a derivative of the word hospitality. And I look at some place like a hospice house as a place where God's hospitality can be extended. And to me, that's very exciting. My 43-year-old friend was diagnosed with breast cancer and lived three years undergoing some pretty grueling treatment. My friend was really clear that she didn't want to die in a hospital. She didn't want to be poked and prodded anymore. Uh, she wanted to be comfortable. So they moved her to this hospice house 
and I was floored by how welcoming and comfortable the actual facility and the people were. My husband had pancreatic cancer. We had a young child and he was seven at the time and we really needed some help. I was able to sit and be with him and not have to worry about taking care of the basics and rather than being a caregiver where I was able to be, um, you know, the primary caregiver, I was able to just, uh, uh, you know, enjoy and talk with him and just spend time with him and not resent it. The hospice home really uh, changed my opinion on hospice. Uh, it's, it wasn't as clinical. I mean, you walk into this home and it really feels like a home. I mean, there was a living room and a kitchen and, you know, the rooms, you, you were able to make them your own. Hospice can make a remarkable difference in end-of-life care. We need your support for Campus of Caring's mission to build and operate a hospice home for the families right here in our own community. It's being able to be in a place that can be what that person was about and honors that person. We have to do a tremendous job educating people, but more so, we have to have a facility on the South Shore. Because death and dying, it happens. Everybody does die. But if you have the comfort and the, and the compassion of your family around you, what a difference that makes to everybody. It happens better in a, in a non-acute setting. It happens better in the home if it can. And if it can't happen in the home, it happens best in a hospice house, which tries, tries to recreate that, that loving feeling of a home. The hospice home really made it possible for us to be together as a family. It was really the best thing we could have done for her. It was the most unselfish thing. We could have brought her home, but she wouldn't have been cared for as well. And you know, at that point, it's, you know, it's quality of life. Not everyone has that conventional family. Not everyone has that conventional home. And for those folks who don't have that, the hospice home is paramount because everyone should have the opportunity to die with dignity.